more about uh, facial recognition and the problems therein. So I'm going to get off the stage. So please give a warm welcome to Liz and Suchi, who will be talking about facial recognition. Thank you. And so being a lawyer, we have to start with the legalese first. So while Suchi and I, I'm Liz, are lawyers, we are unicorns, we are not your lawyer, we are not your unicorn, anything offensive I say should not be held against my employer's scythe, anything brilliant that I say definitely, definitely should be reported back to scythe of what a brilliant job I did on stage. I have worked for 15 years working with security researchers, engineers and developers and helping them identify ways to get basically get shit done uh, within the legal and regulatory framework. So I'm Lawyer Liz on Twitter, and where I don't excel necessarily is on the privacy and data side, so I brought in backup to help anchor the conversation. Hey guys, my name is Suchi. I've been a lawyer for the last what feels like forever. Um, I originally started in IT. I'm a super nerd. I went into law school to do data privacy and cybersecurity, and like Liz left the law firm practice to go hang out with actual security and tech folks and do the law thing to help you guys out. So we are super excited to talk to you guys today about uh, facial recognition. And what we're gonna be talking about is how facial recognition is ubiquitous, the issues that exist with the regulatory frameworks that we have now, and an action plan for those of you who are engineers and developers to help avoid the perils and also privileges. So if anyone was watching the news this week, you may have heard of a settlement that if you thought Equifax was bad, yeah, Facebook just took one on the chin. Because who didn't like tagging people in photos? Well, what happens when it's automatic, when the suggestions are there? Because by the way, Facebook, my brother and I are two distinct people. So quit trying to tell me that I should tag my brother as me in all of the pictures. Thank you very much. I had showered that day and even put on makeup. But when you start looking at all this great technology and when it starts getting it wrong, what happens? Because if you're looking for, you know, okay, we're gonna send in the regulatory framework. Yeah, at that point, the chicken's already out of the egg. And quite frankly, as we're gonna talk about, the puppy is already a muffin. Yeah, so Facebook is doing its thing with users and getting sued for that, and that's great. And that's not where you wanna be. And then you have Clearview, which recently popped into the news and then immediately was sued with a class action lawsuit as well. And what they're doing is scraping a bunch of data and helping helping law enforcement with this garbage in, garbage out. And you're gonna hear that phrase from us a lot today and um, kudos to Claire Garvey who does a bunch of facial recognition work at the Georgetown Privacy and Tech Center for that phrase. So in getting an idea of where the landscape is, you're, we wanna talk a little bit about, well, okay, what all is happening? Who doesn't love the convenience factor of, I don't have to type in my password, I just hold up my phone, Sometimes it recognizes me, sometimes it doesn't. Airports. Everyone hates having to go through the airport and go through TSA. So, and going through all that hassle. Well, being able to come in, have your face as your ticket, being able to get through the TSA quicker, being able to basically move through Customs and Border quicker, great. Well, if that's all it was, the convenience factor, that's one thing. But now you have all these partnerships developing where not only in, in our notes section at the end, we have these links. This is a fun little website to play around with because what it does is it tells you who is using facial recognition in different areas. But not just who is doing it, but who has created these partnerships so that your driver's license photo, oh yes, that one. The one that maybe you haven't updated, that's being used in partnership with the FBI that's being used across for facial recognition purposes. And not only that, if you look at the patent applications of companies, because it's not all about the Bitcoins. Sometimes it's about let's incorporate facial recognition. This is gonna be great. Everybody's filing a patent. They're 
let's put it in here, let's put it in there. So you see this huge upswing in it. But also, let's talk about our smartphones that we had, the convenience factor once again. If you look at the market for smartphones with facial recognition, oh boy, we start going through the roof. Well, when you start talking about convenience, take a step back and remember, it's for the children. And if you're do performing a survey that the Brookings Institute conducted, said, okay, how comfortable are you with facial recognition? Well, eh, we're all a little iffy when they went through and did this study and said, eh, if, you're, if you're using it for retail stores to prevent theft, well, okay, eh, I don't like that idea. If you're using it for, oh, I don't know, airports to establish identity, eh, I still don't know if I'm comfortable with that. But if you'll notice, where does everyone start getting comfortable? Drum roll, please, Suji. It's <laughs> in education. And okay, if we're talking about, all right, in schools to protect students, stadiums to protect people, you know, that's when you start seeing this shift. Which is kind of fun and interesting if you're a privacy nerd because students almost always lose their privacy rights or pretty much every right basically and so colleges are having their college students install an app that tracks where they are checks them into class and in high schools because of the whole school shooting environment you have um, perpetual surveillance and that data basically stays forever so when we're talking about this loose idea of strictness with student data um, that paradigm has been there for a while, and it's very worrisome that we're seeing it in the facial recognition area, too. So, okay, we've collected all this data. You know that the convenience factor, well, why, where does it start becoming problematic when you start looking at, for example, this GAO report that came out of where the DOJ has established all these different partnerships. So, again, we're talking about, oh, my driver's license photo. Well, what about my driver's license photo, my mug shots? And you start looking at this map and you see where, oh, all this stuff that's working exactly as we thought it would is being used in places we didn't think it would. So, of course, not only for the children, regulators, Congress, everybody wants to jump in and say, all right, we'll save the day. Until you start considering who is considering biometric data and who is protecting it. Oh, wait, I only see one state on the above map in yellow. That is the only state that so far has passed a comprehensive legislation that deals with the biometric data and the PI and all of that wrapped in. California came in, you see some other states, even Maryland, who, I mean, Maryland gets a bad rap these days for lots of different things, but at least Maryland in 2019 took their data breach legislation and said, okay, a data breach that involves biometric data, that is PII. That is, that's going to fall into this. So they're not protecting just that, but they're saying, okay, if you have a breach and it goes into this, you need to be protecting that biometric data because as we talked about face off, it's not like you can change it. And okay, I'd like to say that the systems are built, like everything is designed perfectly. It's working perfectly. Breaches happen. So for example, in August earlier 2019, what happened when all this data that's been collected is, yeah, you, know, you have a breach. I mean, I'm all for cosmetic surgery, but it shouldn't be a run of the mill, oh, we're, we're monitoring your data, we're monitoring your credit score. Oh, that nose, that nose just got breached. So you're gonna have to get a new one and ugh. That, that hair, the ear structure, no. Because at that point, when your face has become your password, when your voice is your password, when all of that happens, where do you go? So again, the legislators are trying to catch up, but that's assuming lots of things. One, Illinois, again, being the only state, 2008 is when they came up with their, as I like to call it, bibbity bobbity bippa but their Biometric Information Privacy Act. And so you'll notice suddenly there's an uptick. Now that everyone is using this data, using this information, you're suddenly seeing all the class action lawsuits. In fact, Home Depot and Lowe's provide us the best example. So Facebook just got hammered. 
you have Clearview working. Well, one of the cases working through the court system is Home Depot and Lowe's. What they were doing is they were using the biometric data, oh, for identification, right? No, they were using it for theft, loss prevention. Well, that's not exactly what you would have thought when you thought of a camera. Like, that's taking the data, assuming the data was even correct, and using it for something else. And they weren't protecting it. They weren't, they didn't have any classifications. So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, no, we're tracking you as you walk into the store, walk through the store, we're using it, oh, I don't know, marketing purposes, all kinds of stuff. So all of this is getting exposed, but what exactly is happening and how it was collected and how it's going to be used is a whole different story. Yeah, which brings us to what the hell is biometric data? And for BIPA, it's face prints plus some other stuff. But where face prints mean data points comprised of various measurements of person's face geometry, such as the distance between the eyes, nose, and ears compiled into a string that can be stored and recognized. And the interesting thing is it means that it can't just be like a blurry picture that your grandma has. It has to be a very specific set of things to trigger BIPA. So face prints, which brings us to puppy in, muffin out. The algorithm has to have the right information go in to get the right information out. What's the puppy? What's the muffin? And Elon Musk was also like, what the fuck? Um, so, <laughs> and that's assuming that I'm not messing with the data going in. That's assuming I haven't decided that a rhinestone face mask is not exactly how I want to go. That's assuming I am not a protester and trying to thwart the data and not corrupt it, not do that by 3D printing, oh, I don't know, Suchi's face, and wearing that mask everywhere. That's assuming that what's going in is going to come out puppy in, puppy out, okay, not but blueberry muffin. If you were to 3D print my face and wear it, then would my fucking phone camera recognize me? Because I'd love that. No. I mean, Damn mine it. doesn't even recognize me. So. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which brings us to um, the bias pieces of it. So. Hey, Suchi, is the flash on? Right, which actually encapsulates my entire experience in law school with the cameras that would face tag you. So the long running joke with my friends was um, put the brown person in front and turn the flash on because otherwise I was never tagged in any of the pictures. I was just like the wall and some teeth, which wasn't a great experience. Um, and I'm glad they fixed it later. But for a little while, it was touch and go there. Um, so it's not you, it's me. The things that go into building an algorithm and testing an algorithm and the biases really reflect sort of the systemic problems that we have in society. Um, for example, here you'll notice that lighter males didn't really have error rates. It's super short. Yeah. And then darker females are just, eh, you know, fuck you, can't see you, don't know what you are, can't recognize you. And this is Microsoft, IBM, Amazon, and I don't know what Keros is. So it's, it's face large plus companies. Plus, not Facebook on this one. But if you look, like, yeah, if you're getting 37% of it wrong for one classification, and that's not even getting into, you know, whether when we start getting out of that binary male, female, you, when you start getting into the disadvantaged or different minorities, and you start getting outside the, well, it's a red-headed white chick, so we'll get her right some of the time. And think of all the different places this is being used. Again, it's the puppy in, muffin out. Which brings us to automated hiring systems, and your face is a liability. So there's been, there have been some recent papers about automated hiring systems. Um, the Fortune 100 companies have really picked these up. And basically, you sit in front of a computer and you take an interview. And what it's looking at is what I'm gonna call the newfound phrenology of the face. Does your expression and the things that you convey with your voice uh, fit the characteristics that your employer wants? And what it doesn't take into account is um, resting bitch face. Which, it doesn't take into account that you may be on the call and bored to tears in an office that at the time had no windows in the back of administrative offices and quite frankly, God, the call could not go any longer. So if you're making that expression, suddenly you're not going to get the job. 
Maybe you're thinking and you're processing the information. You're waiting for the question. Maybe your culture doesn't value making eye contact. Instead, you're supposed to express your emotions or your communication style a different way. Maybe, well, quite frankly, again, you're just bored. But now it's taking that biometric information, assuming that the algorithm that, of course, only an energetic, you know, excited person will have a smile and that the smile has to show X number of teeth and get everything just right, otherwise you're not gonna get the job. That's ridiculous. So scientists are pointing out that this is bunk. You're, you're basing all these decisions on something that isn't accurate. You've, got, you've already got a 37% accuracy rate on different things. Well, now you're just even adding it further because you're going past the convenience factor and now you're actually making life decisions based on algorithms or based on interpretations that aren't accurate. Which gets us two points. One is that we don't know how that lands in the regulatory framework in the US. Don't know whether it's an employment violation, hasn't been explored, but the technology is being used. So we've got a problem there. Can I deny you a job based on what I think your face is conveying to me? I don't know, probably. And the other part is that it doesn't take into account, potentially, um, if you're on the spectrum. And that raises a huge issue. If you're on the spectrum somewhere and this thing is trained on faces that have uh, very extroverted expressions and allegedly mean something, then there is a big question of, of what's happening to us with different people it in our society matter. who are functional. Yeah, does it matter that you didn't do something? Well, apparently it is. So how can you, when you're not the one making the regulation, how can you as the person creating the different ideas and creating the systems on the, be on the beginning phases at that initial stage, what can you do to basically filter out some of this, help do this while some of the time, because again, chicken's already out of the egg. You know, it's the puppy's already being analyzed, whether it gets analyzed for the muffin or whatever, how, how can we work with that? Yeah, and I think what we've done is basically curated the feedback that a lot of different groups who work on uh, algorithmic bias and algorithms period in society have been recommending for developers and engineers. And we have, I think about two minutes, I'm not entirely sure, so we're gonna run through these real fucking quick, which is test for bias. So test against different demographics and make an internal check for algorithmic bias. And also make sure that the data that you're using includes error rates instead of just pass rates because that might actually entrench the existing bias that you have. And then disclose the metrics. Submit your algorithm to public independent accuracy competitions and show your work, show the math. You can publish um, performance results for benchmarking and also help using uh, public available data sets. Last but not least, put in some data protections. Limit the access to the data internally and externally. Limit the use of the data internally and externally. Put in some data retention and destruction policies and actually put your biometric data definitions into the policies you already have. So that way, as people are using the research or the software and everything for other purposes, perhaps in what you intended, give them an idea of what they're working with, of what, how you reached the conclusions you did so that they know better how it's being used and if it's being used off course, then they can work from there. Okay, and then we have our best practices framework, um, which is all around self-regulation. So try to set up an acceptable use framework that has some of these minimum things like photo quality standards and algorithmic audits, and then try an internal tech ethics board. And we have asterisks here for a reason. So Suji, is it a good idea to have someone on your ethics board who, I don't know, doesn't recognize anything other than male, female, orders at birth? Well, Google did it, allegedly. And how would that perhaps skew the data sets and how you're approaching certain questions that deal with, oh, I don't know, entire judgment based on what someone else has defined and not recognize what all is out there? Yeah, you're basically fucked. So Google's internal tech board lasted for about a week and then it was completely fucked. It didn't work. So don't do what they did, but try it. Try, try the actual having an ethics person. So we have sources, we have resources, and if you're an engineer or developer, um, check out the end of the slide and 
hopefully make a pledge uh, to be awesome and help algorithms be awesome. So yeah. <laughs>